Hey guys, I'm back with another review, and this time, instead of a figure, we're going to take a look at a statue, the first in my collection, and I did show this in my recent update video, but it is the DC Collectibles Batman Black and White Batman Beyond statue, and I, it is absolutely gorgeous. I'm so happy I picked this up. I almost didn't, and I went home that day thinking, you know, I should have looked at it, I should have grabbed it and so the next day after work I went and I checked it out and picked it up because it was a steal and I just I'm a big fan of Batman Beyond I'm a big fan of how gorgeous the statue is so it's a no-brainer right there so I just I was really excited to get it and thus I wanted to review it before any of my other stuff that I know I, I'm due to review <laughs> so sorry about that but I just had to so yeah, I mean, I guess I'll show you the box and just tell you a little bit about um, it and my story. Uh, put him off to the side and bring this in. So, <clears throat> this is the box. It's your typical DC Collectibles box that they started using, I want to say, maybe last year or the year before. And um, that I believe this statue came out around November of last year. I did try to look it up. Um, but I wasn't really able to find any details about the statue, which is very strange. But I did find a, um, a review on somebody's blog, and it was done in November of 2012, and they had said the most recent release from DC Collectibles, blah blah blah, so it was probably um, October or November of 2012 when this was released. And I don't know if they did a limited run, there's no numbers on the on the statues, but they, they seem to be hard to find because they are become quite expensive. And, um, so I, I, they, they, I looked on eBay and Amazon and they go for upwards of like $120 now. The original retail, uh, my comic shop had it originally for 90 bucks and I think they're usually pretty average as far as retail prices go. So it's shot up a little bit since retail release and I picked it up for, as you can see, 50 bucks because there was a chip on the right ear. Now, I actually already fixed the chip in the ear, so I'm not able to show you the damage, uh, but I will put a picture in the description box of what it looked like before I fixed it so you can just get an idea, because it wasn't that big of a, a break to begin with, and since I was able to fix it, it was absolutely a steal at $50, so I'm just going to take a look at the box, and um, so yeah, let me show you up close the shot of the statue, um, the fold down you know, D for the DC Collectibles logo. You have uh, Batman Black and White, Batman Beyond statue. It, it was designed by Dustin Nugent and sculpted by Jonathan Matthews. And you get a shot of the whole statue on this side. And then on this side, you get, you know, like a zoomed in shot again. Um, it tells you it's a cold cast porcelain statue. And then on the back, you have um, just a little read up. I'll bring this in for you. So, Terry McGinnis makes his triumphant return as the Dark Knight in, of the future in this timeless addition to the Batman Black and White line of collectibles. Based on designs by the talented Justin Nugent, ba the monochromatic tones of this elegant statue highlight Batman's futuristic design. And it shows you coming soon the Frank Miller Batman statue and the Sean Cheeks Galloway Batman. You have the We Can Be Heroes logo, so this is, yeah, this is definitely a fairly recent release. All that other good stuff. Whatever, bottom, boring. And the top is just the Batman Black and White logo. So yeah, take a look at the statue now. And like I said, this statue is gorgeous. Um, the black and white style worked really well for this, even though Terry's costume is black and red. Um, the red parts were done in varying grayscale tones, and um, the wings are red in the cartoon, obviously, and the comics, but they're done in like a clear plastic, which is actually a pretty cool alternative. So I like that a lot. So I'm just gonna kinda, I mean, I don't have one of those cool turny things most of you guys have, but I'll just kinda turn it, you know, with my hand. <laughs> but yeah, it's just such a dynamic pose. It's so beautiful. I, I'm i just so thrilled with this. I, you know, a lot of the Batman black and white statues I don't think are really posed as dynamically, but it's, it's fitting for the younger Terry, I think, and the slimmer suit, it just all looks really, really good, so. That's a, that's your 360, the, uh, the old school style. And I'm just gonna bring it in so I can show you up close now some of the detail. 
that's on this statue. And I'm going to start with the stand just so you can see that. It's the, I don't know if they're, I don't think they're all the same, but I, or if they change them s sometime around the release of the statue, but they're, it's a black and white logo. Um, it's, it's, it's all right. I mean, it's kind of distracting in a way because it's so brightly white and black and, but, you know, whatever. On the bottom you have TM and copyright DC Comics. I guess that is the year. Oh, is this September 2012? There you go. September 2012, folks. So, yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and jump right in and show you the detail, I guess. So, um, I might as well just show you while it's here. As you can see, his ears are both there. <laughs> um, it was his right ear that was chipped, and it was a good, you know, little chunk right here that was chipped off. And I built it back up with some epoxy sculpt sanded it down, tried to get it as close as I could to the uh, left ear as uh, the shape and length and everything. Um, it's not 100% perfect, but I think I did a pretty good job. And then just painted it flat black and it, it, it actually looked pretty seamless in the end, so um, I'm really happy. You know, when it's on display, you're not looking at it super up close anyway, so right there, can you tell that I fixed it? Probably not. So I'm really happy that I was able to fix it, and um, I'll put again I'll post a picture in the des description of what it looked like before I, I got to it. So yeah, and we'll look at the face. So he's got the um, slightly open mouth, but he doesn't look as angry as he does on say the DC Universe Classics figure of him, which I'm so happy about because that figure is just like he's like grimacing. It's 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 kind of scary. <laughs> so this one's really really nicely done. Um, if he hadn't had the open mouth, he'd probably look a little kind of boring in a way. I like the open mouth and he, he does have that in the cartoon a lot so it looks a lot like him. Um, sorry, I'm kind of just going to jump around here to different pieces but his right hand is the one that's post gripping the base um, and it looks really good. You can see like each individual finger bending um, and then you have the really long pieces coming off the gauntlets with these. You, know, you can see the sculpting detail inside of the arm looks really really good. Um, the back muscles look awesome. The details inside the costume. You have um, this ring around the back of the head. All this just looks really good. Again you have the spikes coming off the gauntlets and this hands in a fist. Take a look at the chest now. So yeah, the chest symbol is red in the show, uh, but it is a darker gray on this, this statue, and it's, um, it's etched in there really nicely. It looks like it just flows with the rest of the lines that have been sculpted in here. Looks really, really good. And he looks, he looks slim but fit, like Terry McGinnis does. Um, a lot of people always complain about the DC Universe Classics figure, for example, being too buff because Terry's a teenager and he's supposed to be slimmer, so... This is done really, really nicely. And again, so the belt, again, is red in the show, and it's done in a light, light gray around, and then darker gray in the center. And you have, and, these, and this is raised here, these pieces of the belt. You have the legs going up and bent and pointed. It just looks great, really, really nice. So in the bottom of the feet, you even have the detail that he has. You see, you see this sometimes, I think, on the show. He's got, and you know, he has um, like thrusters or whatever in his boots, so he can fly. Um, and this just looks really good. The detail on the feet, which is, you know, depending on the way you pose him, you actually do see the bottom of his feet. So it's nice to have that detail in there. And now the wings are this, like I said, clear plastic, and they have like a a texture into them. And if you can see that, it's like a honeycomb texture that kind of blurs the lines in the background there. And I like that choice. I think it was interesting to go with like a clear wing instead of um, maybe one of the grays or something. Cause it's, it's always interesting to translate color material to a black and white statue where, you know, a lot of bad, you know, Batman's often drawn all black, or, uh, the black, most most often black and gray, um, or all black, or you know, gray and blue. So it's it's easier, probably you know, easier to translate him than a nice bright red character. So this looks a little different than the source material. 
but I think, you know, Dustin Nugent and, sorry, what was the other fellow's name, Jonathan Matthews, they both did fantastic jobs in their parts of the statue, so I'm, again, super happy to have this in my collection, and may it be the start of more statues, who knows, um, but this one I just had to pick up, so, yeah. Uh, before I wrap it up, I just wanted to mention uh, the statue is about 8.2 inches high, which it does say on the box, and I did not show 8.2 inches high. Um, so he, and he actually surprisingly doesn't look much taller than a, a six-inch figure. I mean, I guess he's okay. So if he's on the base, he's just a bit taller. The base is probably you know half of an inch itself, though. So yeah. So yeah, that's it. That's it now, guys. I'm wrapping it up. I just, I have nothing but good things to say about this statue. I'm so happy I was able to pick it up at such a steal and, and be able to fix it and not just have to live with it broken because I picked it up so cheap. So, yeah, that's about it, guys. I hope you guys like the review and the statue, and thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in future reviews. Thanks, guys. Bye. show you the box and just tell you a little bit about um, it and my story. Uh, put him off to the side and bring this in. So <clears throat> this is the box. It's your typical DC collectibles box that they started using, I want to say, maybe last year or the year before. And um, that I believe this statue came out around November of last year. I did try to look it up um, but I wasn't really able to find any details about the statue, which is very strange. But I did find a, um, a review on somebody's blog, and it was done in November of 2012, and they had said the most recent release from DC Collectibles, blah, blah, blah. So it was probably um, October or November of 2012 when this was released. And I don't know if they did a limited run. There's no numbers on the on the statues, but they, they seem to be hard to find because they are become quite expensive. And, um, so I, I, they, they, I looked on eBay and Amazon and they go for upwards of like $120 now. The original retail, uh, my comic shop had it originally for 90 bucks and I think they're usually pretty average as far as retail prices go. So it's shot up a little bit since retail release and I picked it up for, as you can see, 50 bucks because there was a chip on the right ear. Now, I actually already fixed the chip in the ear, so I'm not able to show you the damage, uh, but I will put a picture in the description box of what it looked like before I fixed it so you can just get an idea, because it wasn't that big of a, a break to begin with, and since I was able to fix it, it was absolutely a steal at $50, so I'm just going to take a look at the box, and um... hey guys, I'm back with another review, and this time, instead of a figure, we're going to take a look at a statue, the first in my collection, and I did show this in my recent update video, but it is the DC Collectibles Batman Black and White Batman Beyond statue. And I, it is absolutely gorgeous. I'm so happy I picked this up. I almost didn't, and I went home that day thinking, you know, I should have looked at it, I should have grabbed it, and so the next day after work I went and I checked it out and picked it up because it was a steal. and. I just, I'm a big fan of Batman Beyond, I'm a big fan of how gorgeous the statue is, so it's a no-brainer right there. So I just, I was really excited to get it and thus I wanted to review it before any of my other stuff that I know I, I'm due to review, so sorry about that, but I just had to. So yeah, I mean, I guess I'll- And the Sean Cheeks Galloway Batman. You have the We Can Be Heroes logo, so this is, yeah, this is definitely a fairly recent release. All that other good stuff, whatever, bottom, boring, and the top is just the Batman Black and White logo. So yeah, take a look at the statue now. And like I said, this statue is gorgeous. Um, the black and white style worked really well for this, even though Terry's costume is black and red. Um, the red parts were done in varying grayscale tones and um, the wings are red in the cartoon, obviously, and the comics, but they're done in like a clear plastic, which is actually a pretty cool alternative. So I like that a lot. So I'm just going to kind of, I mean, I don't have one of those cool turny things most of you guys have, but I'll just kind of, so yeah, show you up close the shot of the statue. 
um, the fold down, you know, D for the DC Collectibles logo. You have uh, Batman Black and White, Batman Beyond statue. It, it was designed by Dustin Nugent and sculpted by Jonathan Matthews. And you get a shot of the whole statue on this side. And then on this side, you get, you know, like a zoomed in shot again. Um, it tells you it's a cold cast porcelain statue. And then on the back, you have um, just a little read up. I'll bring this in for you. So, Terry McGinnis makes his triumphant return as the Dark Knight in, of the future in this timeless addition to the Batman Black and White line of collectibles. Based on designs by the talented Justin Nugent, ba the monochromatic tones of this elegant statue highlight Batman's futuristic design. And it shows you coming soon the Frank Miller Batman statue, 